Hi, this is Daryl Meyer from Keller, Texas. Today is Tuesday, December 7th, 2010. Oh, that's Pearl Harbor Day. Uh, if you're not familiar, check out uh, Pearl Harbor online. Google it, look it up, see what happened to America when we were attacked by another nation. Anyway, uh, you've all heard about WikiLeaks. It's been all over the place. Well, they finally arrested the man who is the founder of WikiLeaks. Uh, this story out of Arud Sheva says, uh, Assange arrested in Britain vows to fight extradition. One of the most wanted men on two continents, WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange, was arrested Tuesday afternoon by British police at the request of Swedish authorities who issued an international arrest warrant for him. Meanwhile, Defense Minister Ehud Barak said Tuesday that the United States' preoccupation with WikiLeaks has led to a reduction in U.S. efforts to pressure Israel into agreeing to another building freeze in Judea and Samaria. So there's something good <laughs> coming out of the whole WikiLeaks thing. Uh, says Assange is wanted in Sweden on charges of sexual assault against two women who filed a police complaint against him earlier this year. The 39-year-old Australian national surrendered voluntarily and is to appear in a London courtroom later Tuesday on a hearing to extradite him to Sweden. Assange was believed to have been hiding in southern England for the past several weeks since the release of the Cablegate documents. In several recent statements, Assange's attorneys have accused the U.S. of promoting the charges against their client as a form of revenge for the release of the Cablegate documents. They said that they would fight Assange's extradition to Sweden. Uh, so if you're not familiar with it, uh, this guy has released more than 250,000 cables that are supposed to be released that are um, pretty much confidential documents uh, between governments, leaders, business deals, security, and many other American diplomats. Uh, these things probably should not be released to the public. And, and, and you know, this is one of those things where you kind of have to go, is this real? Is this something they're planning? so they can just give us information they want and I don't know uh, I know there's always conspiracy theories about everything that ever happens uh, I don't know if this WikiLeaks things is for real or if, if it's planned by the media if it's planned by the US government I, I don't know I wouldn't think it would be planned because several of the stories are embarrassing to the United States government so I tend to take everything with a grain of salt you know, I, I think it could be possibly real, but again, I'm just reporting what I'm finding out. Uh, a lot of the things I'm reporting tend to show us that we're approaching those times in the Bible that Revelation, Daniel, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Zechariah, some of the Psalms talk about being the final days before the return of Jesus Christ. And I know you're probably going, what's WikiLeaks got to do with it? Well, it's it may be part of the the way that America's downfall is completed. Uh, I think that America has to be removed from power in order for the Antichrist to step up because if America remains the power that they were in the 80s for instance I don't think anyone could step up and take control of the the whole world on a global stage. So America almost has to be brought down to her knees in order for this to happen so that's part of why I'm bringing you this here's an interesting story also out of Arut Sheva Argentina and Uruguay recognize Palestinian Authority as a state they're not one yet so how can they do that the story says Argentina announced on Monday that it recognizes a Palestinian state calling Palestine a free and independent state within its 1967 borders the Associated Press reported. According to the report, Argentina said the announcement reflects its frustration at the slow progress of peace talks with Israel. Argentinian President Cristina Kirchner informed Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas of the decision. Argentine Foreign Minister Hector Timmerman said this. He said that Argentina is deeply frustrated that the goals of the 1991 peace talks in Madrid and the Oslo Accords of 1993 still have not been reached. The time has come to recognize Palestine as a free and independent state, he was quoted in AP as saying. Hmm, um, that's interesting. 
there is um, another related story I'm going to read further on down in today's message. This next story comes out of Yahoo.com. It says, Hezbollah has over 50,000 rockets. This is out of Washington. U.S. officials believe the militant group Hezbollah has acquired an arsenal of some 50,000 plus rockets and missiles, raising fears of an enlarged conflict with Israel, the New York Times reported today. The Times quoted a Pentagon official expressing concern over the Hezbollah arsenal in response to a series of leaked diplomatic cables on the issue, the WikiLeaks thing. The cables highlighted U.S. concerns about proliferation of weapons, especially from Syria, the Daily said. The Pentagon official indicated Hezbollah's arsenal now includes over 50,000 rockets and missiles, including 40 to 50 Fatah 110 missiles capable of reaching Tel Aviv and most of Israel, and 10 Scud D missiles. Uh, the arsenal acquisition by Hezbollah has raised fears that any future conflict with Israel could erupt into a full scale regional war, the Times said. Oh boy. You know, I, I'm. I'm a peaceful man. I'm not all about war. I report on these things because the Bible has prophesied some of these wars in Psalms 83 and also Ezekiel 38 and 39. There are wars that Israel will go through prior to the final war. And I believe we're right at the front doorstep of these wars spoken of in the Holy Bible over 2,000 years ago. A couple of those. I know Ezekiel's uh, prophecies are probably about 1,500 years old. Uh, I'm sorry, they're, they're way older than that, 2,500 years old. I was thinking of something in Matthew. Uh, anyway, so that's, that's why I report these things. I, I'm not pushing for war. I'm not hoping for war. But it's coming. Whether you like it or not, whether you believe it or not, it will come because the Bible prophesied it. Here's something out of BrisbaneTimes.com. Gaza militants fire rocket at Israel. Okay, this happens all the time. You probably won't hear this much, but a rocket was fired into southern Israel on Monday from the Islamist-ruled Palestinian Gaza Strip, a military spokesperson said. The projectile exploded in open ground south of Ashkelon, the port south of Israel's second city of Tel Aviv, she said. Um, now, here's something, though. This year alone, there's been over 200 rockets and mortar rounds fired at Israel this year over 200 that sounds pretty serious if 200 were fired at the United States I guarantee you somebody would pay somebody would be wiped out over that but when it happens to Israel the world just falls silent they don't seem to care and I believe we need to back Israel and uh, don't send me messages saying oh have you seen how they did this and what they've done here and who they did this to you know people are sinful there's no perfect people, there's no perfect countries, but God loves Israel. The Bible calls Israel the apple of God's eye. And God says that I will bless those who bless Israel and curse those who curse Israel. So I'm going to fall on the blessing side, okay? And that's the only Israel on earth. Don't tell me, oh, it's not the same one. It's the only one on earth. It's in the same place the one in the Bible was. So I think it's the same one. Here's something out of press TV, as what I was talking about earlier. Palestine eligible for UN membership. <laughs> really? Palestine already meets the required criteria for being a member state of the United Nations human rights and international lawyer Paul Wolf says. Basically, the criteria for being a state are to have a stable population, to have defined territory, to have a government, and have the ability to conduct foreign relations, Wolf said today. He said, I think anyone looking at Palestine would say they meet that definition already, he noted in an interview with Press TV. Really? They have a defined territory? Show me. Tell me where it is. I don't see it. I can look on a globe. I don't see anything marked as Palestine. So I'm not sure where he's getting his information. Uh, this story goes on, but <laughs> I'm not going to read the rest of it. I just thought that was bizarre that we have so many people already willing to recognize Palestine as a sovereign nation. Okay, I don't know if you saw this or not, but Glenn Beck, oh boy, he's making some enemies. This out of NewsER.com. Glenn Beck estimates that 10% of all Muslims are terrorists. Wow! <laughs> that's, that's stepping out there. And since there's 1.5 billion Muslims in the world, 
Beck is basically calling 157 million Muslims terrorists. Boy, he's going to be catching some flack over that. That's uh, And I don't know if his numbers are close, if they're small, if they're large. I don't know, and I'm not... I am not claiming to support him on that. Um, I don't know how right or wrong he might be, but I thought, man, that is a bold statement to make. Okay, out of WorldNetDaily.com, will the internet be ObamaNet? The Obama administration is poised to begin a federal look at what government officials schemes for control of freedom-loving domain verse site of web. That's confusing. Anyway, this goes on to say, I'm not going to read again this whole story, but they are trying to have government control over the Internet. And it will be voted on before the end of this year, before December ends, it will be voted on. But in short, critics are concerned that this move is the beginning of a progression that could end with a fairness doctrine for the Internet. You know, when that doctrine, which was abandoned during Reagan's presidency as unconstitutional, when that doctrine was in effect for broadcast outlets, it sucked the life out of programming by demanding a fair handling of airtime. Meaning, this very program I do right here, when I bring you the good news of Jesus Christ, I will also have to present a balanced view from the other side. Meaning, atheists or demon worship, I don't know. Um, so you have to have a fair and balanced doctrine under the fairness doctrine. It sounds like a really good thing, but it's really a really bad thing because it would make every televangelist have to present a side that goes against what they're talking about. So we'll see what happens with the internet uh, later this month. Okay, how much time? Ah, uh, running short on time. There's a story out of worldviewweekend.com talking about the mark. You know, I've told people for probably 10 years that RFID chips would probably be the the instrument used to usher in the mark of the beast but there is a new thing that is a tattoo with implantable silicon silk electronics that can just be tattooed to the skin the silk kind of um, fades away and these implantable electronics stay something to watch for anyway okay let's go to Isaiah 59 verse 2 I've been talking about prayer I'm gonna continue there Isaiah 59 verse 2 but your iniquities have separated you from God, and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. Okay, there is a time where God doesn't hear your prayers, doesn't hear your calls because of your sin. So let's talk about this. Why is contrition so important? Why should you bother confessing your sins to God when you pray? Isaiah's words here should send a chill up our spines. Because of your sins, he has turned away and will not listen anymore. Sin unconfessed sin has a way of dulling God's ears to hear our prayers when there's something wicked and sinful buried in our hearts God doesn't pretend that everything's okay he's determined that we deal with it before moving forward with the plans he has for us there's a picture of this in the Old Testament uh, in Joshua 7 you read about a man named Achan A-C-H-A-N I'm not sure how you say that but he was a member of these, the Israeli community that began to take possession of the promised land now, city after city fell to the Israelites, and God made it very clear they weren't supposed to take any possessions for themselves. Unfortunately, this man did that. And worse, he thought he could cover up the sin by burying his secret spoil under his tent. Then something happened. Israel suffered a surprise defeat, and it was revealed that God was not going to bless their endeavors because there was sin in the camp. Well, you can read in Joshua 7 what happened. They, uh, this man actually confessed, and they stoned him to death. And uh, But contrition is how we dig up those secret spoils that God has determined to deal with before taking us deeper into that place of promise that he's prepared for us. Now, in Hebrews 12, verse 1 and 2, it says, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Let me go to Thessalonians, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. 
God bless you. Get on your knees and pray to God. I hope to see you again tomorrow.